unauthorized downloading and using for any other purpose is not allowed. How about you don't tell me what I can and can't do with my property? Get the f off my property! TikTok is one of the most valuable startups in existence, overtaking Uber at $76 billion. That's three times as much as SpaceX, Elon Musk's company set out to colonize nearby space. What is TikTok's business model? People creating and sharing short videos riddled with copyrighted music. PewDiePie has been the most subscribed to independent YouTube channel for five years and is making billions and millions every year. His secret sauce? Using other people's content and reacting to it. In fact, almost every successful creator on the platform has made profit off of copyrighted material authored by someone else. It's no different if you go to Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Everything's a copy of 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 a copy. The success of the internet economy is based on copying information. If you are connected to the internet, it's almost certain you have violated a copyright law in your country, knowingly or not. Copying is the fundamental requirement for computers to function. Computer networks and the internet itself at their core depend on copying information from one device to another. Copying is the very nature of existence. Cells continuously reproduce to create and spread new life. Some organisms even borrow and share one another's genetic information to make new and improved copies of older living organisms. Our social structures as human species has always been based on copying. We've evolved because we freely copied the first human to make a hand tool. We followed the first man out of the caves and built the first huts. There were no patents on wheel, agriculture, domestication or printing press. From generation to generation, we relied on sharing, copying and improving upon information in songs, poems, stories and tales. We thrived because there were no restrictions on passing information from one person to another. But what's natural is not always what makes it into law. With strict copyright and patent laws implemented across the developed world, natural exchange of information has been banned in favor of giving authors exclusive rights to copy and protect their works. But copyright is unlike any other right. It gives the class of authors supreme position over the rest of the society, while treating everyone else as criminals when they want to exercise their free speech and property rights to the full extent. Copyright is the exclusive right to reproduce and distribute someone's work. It's the right to make copies of a protected work, hence copyright. Patents are government protections on improvements and inventions in devices and processes. At least that's on paper. In reality, copyrights and patents are monopolies. Monopolies where only the right holders are allowed to profit from the resources. It's a monopoly because the more copyrights and patents the government protects, the more restricted people are in exercising their property rights. Imagine you and your neighbor both mine stone on your respective properties. Then your neighbor decides to build a sculpture out of a stone. In the world of copyright, the very pattern of this sculpture is now protected under the law. That means no one else is allowed to take full use of their property and make the same sculpture of their own. Since you also own stone, you are allowed to do everything except for making that sculpture. If your neighbor was to start mining stone with a pickaxe, they could patent this new production method and for 20 years you would not be allowed to use a pickaxe to mine your stone on your property. The more people make copyrighted works from their stone, the less and less property rights you can exercise with your stone. The more patents are registered, the more restricted you are in what you can and can't do on your property. That's because the logic behind copyright and patent laws treats ideas as scarce resources when in reality they are infinitely abundant. Copyright, along with other forms of intellectual monopolies like patents, trademarks and trade secrets, is presented as a form of property rights. 
but property rights function completely differently and were put in place for starkly contrasting reasons. The justification of private property is the scarcity of resources. There is a finite amount of land, food, wood, minerals, goods, products and labor. Because of scarcity, people can resolve the competition over scarce resources with conflict. And conflict breeds catastrophe. If tangible things were abundant, there would be no conflict over them and there would be no need for property rights. If somebody took your car, you wouldn't worry about it because you could just get another one by magically snapping your fingers. One's possession of an abundant resource doesn't deprive anyone else of possessing it. Copyright laws are not protecting scarce, tangible goods. They are protecting intangible ideas that are abundant. Copyright law is protecting the idea of a particular sculpture, but property rights protect the materials the sculpture is made of. If you were to violate an author's copyright, you would make a copy of their idea that they didn't allow it to be made. If you were to violate their property rights, you would take their physical sculpture by force without their consent. In both cases, you would be accused of theft and state would use force to coerce you. But only one of them would actually deprive them of their property. The language of copyright advocacy is intentionally misleading. The purpose is to hide the fact it has nothing to do with property rights and that they are actually government-backed monopolies that grant authors a certain degree of partial ownership over everyone else's physical property. The moral and ethical grounds for property rights is to prevent conflict and create a just system of redistribution of scarce resources. What's the justification for copyright? Well, the answer is more philosophical than copyright advocates are willing to admit. Actually, it's entirely philosophical. There is a utilitarian view that says copyright laws incentivize authors to create work and make profit, and profit creates wealth, and wealth benefits society. But there is no clear evidence whether copyright actually stimulates more wealth creation. Many small creators are actually offering their works for free and free from royalties or copyright altogether. Like the author of the background music you are currently listening to. Copying is free advertising. The ones enforcing their copyrights the most are actually big studios, record labels and publishers, not the authors themselves. Most copyrighted works never enter the public domain, so the general public cannot profit from authors' creations. If anything, copyright laws concentrate wealth within the class of right holders. Without copyright laws, software engineers and authors could, and probably would, be even more creative and innovative, as they would have to respond to competition instead of enjoying government protection as monopolies. Going back to the stone and sculpture example, if there weren't intellectual monopolies, Everybody could benefit from improvements and creative works. The cost of stone would go down because the mining process would advance immediately and not once every two decades. Everybody could freely improve upon prior concepts and ideas and thus make stone products better and more available. But even if copyright monopoly proved to create more wealth than a world with no copyright laws, that still wouldn't justify their existence. The goal of law is justice, not wealth maximization. People are responsible for their own wealth, not the government's. What makes copyright holders' monopoly on distribution unethical is that their copyrights institute authors' supremacy over the rest of the population and other human rights. Somehow, it became socially acceptable to equate a mere process of replicating a binary code of information with violently attacking a ship and taking its crew hostage for ransom. Piracy. Piracy is a crime because it deprives other people of their property and endangers their lives through the use of force. Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. Online piracy doesn't exist because downloading a copy of a publicly available work made by someone else doesn't deprive them of anything. There is no use of force and they still have their original works perfectly intact. You can steal someone's candle, but you are not stealing by lighting your candle at theirs. There is no theft in the latter, in fact it's enrichment. By sharing and copying information you can only have more information, you can never have less. 
You could still believe that copying someone's work is wrong, but you can't use utilitarian justifications or make false equivalencies with property rights. So some believe in copyright because everybody has a right to the fruit of their labor and the right to be rewarded for labor is a natural right, hence copyright monopoly is a natural right. Except, this philosophy is unacceptably arbitrary. A mere creation in the process of labor doesn't guarantee ownership. If you work on someone else's property, you don't own the result of your work. If you steal my clay and mold a cup from it, your creation doesn't grant you any rights. If anything, you owe me compensation for damages. The process of creation is simply not enough to grant any sort of protection. According to the copyright and the patent law, scientific truths and abstract ideas like philosophical truths can't be copyrighted or patented. So when a theoretical scientist discovers a new equation or invents a new scientific method, they are engaging in a creative process. When an engineer applies the very same science to improve their products, they are also engaging in a creative process. And still, the work of the engineer is rewarded while the work of the scientist is not. What makes people believe it's fair and moral to reward entertainers, inventors and artists and not theoretical scientists? The line between what's protected and what isn't is entirely arbitrary. It's not based on experience, truth or evidence. Why are copyrights protected up to 90 years after the author's death and patents are protected for exactly 20 years since the date of filing? Why are copyrights automatically given to a created work, but patents must be registered? There is no rigorous standard based on which these lines were drawn. It's a matter of lobbying power, and the lines keep getting redrawn. The European Copyright Directive now aims to hold platforms themselves liable for when their users violate the copyright law. It's not enough that copyright monopoly already prevents you from using your property however you want. If someone else uses your property to break the law, you're guilty by association. This would make platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, Dailymotion, Reddit, and Snapchat liable. At the moment of upload, for any copyright infringement in uploads from users, creators, and artists. Copyright laws are a slippery slope. For the sake of giving authors a higher status in the law, we are trading our free speech and privacy. Copyright strikes are one of the most efficient ways to silence opposition or criticism, and this has been abused by politicians and government officials across the world. It doesn't matter what the reason for a copyright takedown is which turn authors into arbiters of justice, since they can freely choose to enforce the law when it's convenient, ban negative coverage, but allow positive feedback. The logical conclusion of enforcing copyright monopolies is an abolition of privacy. Copyright laws criminalize society. To detect copyright infringement on computer networks, constant monitoring of people's devices or their networks needs to be implemented. If you advocate for stricter copyright laws, you need to be ready to give up your property rights for the seeming benefit you are supposed to have by giving authors monopolies over distribution of information. You don't have to pay for copyrighted works with money, but you are paying for the existence of copyright and patent laws with your freedom of speech and property rights. There are multiple avenues to make profit with creative work, even without copyright monopolies. Personalization, authenticity or accessibility can add value that can't be copied. Together with advertising, sponsorship, donations or merchandising, establishing streams of revenue on a freely available work is more profitable than ever before. It should be the author's responsibility to figure out their income, rather than to use state to force people to pay for that which is abundant.